welcome. Welcome to Ken Hammer TV, everybody. Uh, it is January 27th today, and this is our first show post LVO and the craziness that was LVO. Oh man, so much stuff happened at LVO, and I'm not even talking about the gaming. But we will get to that at some other point. Um, tonight was supposed to be an LVO wrap up show uh, focusing on the custodies list that we talked about last episode before the LVO and just going over and seeing how they did. But I've managed to uh, secure an interview with Bridger Han, who uh, went 5-1 and one at LVO with Pure Custodies. And so we're going to be talking with him on Sunday night uh, here on Can Hammer TV. So tune in for that special interview, and we'll go over LVO at that time. Um, our more general overview of LVO and talking to Nick will probably happen next week. Um, so... Uh, Tomorrow night, instead of the advertised LVO wrap-up show, we are, in fact, talking with Chris all about ETC drama. Yeah, nothing like drama. Um, ITC Sharonin, welcome. Thank you for watching. Shout-out to all my patrons and followers and subscribers and Twitch followers. Shout-out to the Custodies Discord group. If you're wondering where you can find this fabled Custodies Discord group, you can, in fact, find it right here. That link uh, may not be up to date um, because it changes every so often, which is annoying. But anyway, um, you can text, uh, message us, and we'll send you the link. Um, it is growing leaps and bounds daily, and so hopefully it continues to grow. And as we add more people, the discourse becomes much more informative. Um, so uh, hopefully... Um, it'll continue to grow. Uh, so, without further ado, a, a shorter show tonight. What we're going to do actually is cover a topic in part 10 here that is uh, very commonly asked uh, in the Discord, in uh, online, to me personally. Um, so, lots of times this question is asked is, I want to start a custodies army or I want to play custodies. How do I start? Where do I begin? Um, so that was what we're going to cover tonight in part 10. Interestingly, so if you go back to the first six or seven episodes where we did all the reviews of the units, probably if you watch that, you'll get a decent idea of what to buy and where to start. However, this is just going to spell it out for you, tell you how many boxes you need to buy, that sort of thing. So it's going to be a bit more obvious. But um, you should go back and watch those unit reviews. Once we receive our new book, which apparently will probably be not the one coming up next, which is Gene Stiller called Tao and blah, blah, blah. It may be the one after that. Or the one, or that may be the Knights one, and it'll be one after that. So soon, in the next couple of months probably, um, I will be re-going over all the units again. Because hopefully things have changed. We'll see. Um, but no point living in the future. We're going to live for the now. So if you want to start a custodian army, you've come to the right place. Uh, so we're going to cover that tonight um, in a short episode. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so the link, um, because it changes every so often, uh, it's a bit annoying. I have to, like, retype it. So, uh, you know, here it is. I'll type it out. S discord.gg w e f n g q g there it should be one that is uh, even though when i press for the link to share it says this link will never expire quite clearly they do and uh you know that's what happens so so um if you want to start a custodian army and now we're talking about pure custodies. So if you're just thinking about adding a few custodies things to your Imperium soup, then you probably don't need to watch this. Add some shield captains, add a few tanks, whatever it is you want. If you want to start a pure custodies army, there's really um, there's really two ways of going about it. And it's really the same way you start any army. You need to figure out what you want from your army. Do you want to try and play competitively and so trying to play the best units you can um, in a competitive fashion or do you want to just start and play and play cool armies 
play the models that you like. That's kind of the core decision you have to make before making any other decision. And that's basically the same decision you have to make when you look at any army. So, you know, if you just want to play because you like the models and you're not going to play super competitively or you have certain models that you really like and you want to use, then buy those models by all means. I, I started Custodes because I love the lore. And then the models came out and I fell in love with the models. So so really, if that's what, what you want to do, then you don't need me to tell you what to buy. You just buy what you want. If you want to buy, play competitively and you want to go straight into it, then there's probably things that are better to buy, things that you need to buy, and then things that are nice to have. And so probably that's what we're going to talk about a little bit more tonight. Now, uh, some of the guys, George, what's up, George, and are sort of mentioning some, you know, things like mech or foot or bike. And sure, so these are terms that you've probably heard us throw around on the stream about different types of lists that Custodes players are playing these days. And while that's all fine, probably for just starting, that may be a little bit daunting to you. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the things that you really need to get as your basic army. So you're not going to go into an Imperial Guard army and not buy at least 30 Guardsmen. So you're not going to play, you know, buy an Admech army and not buy at least three Scorpius tanks. You know, you're not going to play a Marine army and not buy any Intercessors. So you, you have these basic things which you probably need to play any Custodes list competitively. And so though you should start with buying those things. And Custodes is a low model car count pretty cheap by GW standards armies to build even up to 2000 points and beyond. So by the time you buy the stuff you really need, you've probably got enough to almost play 2000 points. And then and then you go from there. And where you go from there really depends on how you want to play, what style you want to play because it can be very different and really Right now, probably not one is super better than the other. It really kind of depends on who you're going to play against and, and what you like playing. So we're going to keep it pretty basic. We're going to sing the things that you need to buy to start, and then we can branch into some of the other stuff. As always, if you need to start an army on the cheap, then buy used. eBay, Kijiji, uh, you know, buy and sell groups on Facebook, all those sorts of things, there's always a cheaper way of getting Warhammer models, and that is used. Uh, even stores right now, lots of stores have used, people just trade in whole armies at a time. So I got my whole Gene Stella Call army for like 400 bucks. So that can be done, and while Custodes is already cheaper than other armies to start because we have so few models, you can get it even cheaper by buying it used. Some people might even convince me it has way too much shit to get rid of stuff. So, always look into that. Anyway, we're not going to talk too much about price tonight because I can't remember what, what things cost. So, the first thing you need for a custodian's army is your HQs. And it's pretty much a given that most competitive custodian's armies right now will have Trajan Valoris. So, you need to buy Trajan Valoris. So, that is pretty much something you can buy and will almost always use. You can either buy the Trajan Valoris model. If you don't like that, there are other options. You could convert your own up from any Custodes model. You could buy the uh, Forge World Constantine Valdor model, which is a little bit crazy and way bigger than the Trading Valoris model. So you'd have to convert it down, but you could use that. I use the Ixian Hail limited model from Forge World. It's not that limited. I think you can probably get it at Forge World, but it used to be events only. I love that model because it comes with its own stairs. There's lots of options. You can basically do whatever you like, but Trading Valoris is a good buy, and worst comes to worst, you can use them as a normal shield captain. No big deal, except he's got a big axe. So Trading Valoris, good first buy. The second HQs that you're almost always going to use are probably at least one shield captain on a bike, on a Virtus Praetor bike. So you can't just buy one shield captain, though. You have to buy Virtus Praetors in boxes of three. So the next thing you should buy is probably a box of Virtus Praetors, okay? And it comes with three bikes. You make one or two or all three of them look like they could be shield captains. It's really no real model difference, except maybe you don't put a helmet on. No big deal. And then now you have the option of running 
up to three shield captains on bikes or just one or a unit of three bikes you got some options there and so i would buy a box of vertispreaders bikes and have at least one of them as a shield captain okay if you really want to mark it out you can put a different color stripe on it you can do what i did was i stole um i stole sam ales corvex models cape and stuck it on the back of my shield captain to give the shield captain a cape so so you would um uh, do well after trajan to buy a unit of bikes and that's basically your hq is done if you want later on captains that are just on foot or in terminator armor you can just use other boxes for that it's no big deal so you don't need to buy a special box for that so really just need a box of bikes and trajan valores done the next thing you must have in any custodies list is a vexilla and the vexilla comes in two varieties the vexilla is not its own clamshell the vexilla comes as a arm on a box of guardians or on a box of wardens okay so i don't believe the alaris box has a vexilla i think it's just wardens and guardians chat can correct me if i'm wrong so if you want a vexilla you will have to sacrifice one of the models of your guardian box or warden box to become a vexilla you can of course magnetize the right arm which holds the vexilla easy peasy but it is cool that it's like that you don't have to buy a separate clamshell but then it's kind of annoying too that it takes takes one out of your thing okay so vexilla does come in the alaris box too so all three of those main foot soldiers boxes comes with a right arm that is holding the vexilla so you just need to magnetize that so you can swap that in and out doesn't matter which one you use nobody other than custodians players really knows what's the terminator what's the guardian what's the warden nobody really knows so you can use whatever you like so um now in general you know we're not using 10 man units of stuff so you could take that one from any of those boxes and then you would have nine left of guardians terminators or alars you know, or um wardens no big deal so it ends up being a money saver so next thing you need to do then is probably buy custodian guards so custodians guard guardians come in five man boxes i believe five man boxes and so you probably need two of them at the minimum to fill out a basic battalion and which is nine guys so you need nine of those guys and lo and behold that's nine guys and the tenth guy you can turn into a vexilla so now you've bought trajan valoris a biker box and two custodian guard boxes and now you already have almost a thousand points <laughs> if you can believe that um you can play in thousand point tournaments with that army and you know you'll be okay so so that's pretty easy to get started in terms of how to kit out your custodian guards right now probably the best thing to do is to use sword and board however the best thing to do is to magnetize and all the arms are interchangeable on each body between guardians wardens and alaris they're all interchangeable everybody's kits are interchangeable so you just you can just magnetize everything and you'll always be able to get the right combination of gear on any body so that is what i've learned from don't do what i do and just end up buying more things you can magnetize everything it's fairly easy you just drill a little hole in the shoulder and in the body and you can magnetize everything um so yeah other than bikes everything else all the foot soldiers are all completely interchangeable all the arms fit on all the bodies all the heads fit on all the bodies all the everything fits together shoulder pads all fit together the large shoulder pads are slightly different but they do fit on the other bodies so everything is interchangeable so you can do what you like so the best thing to do is to magnetize so now you've got valoris one to three shield captains on bikes nine custodian guardians and a vexilla boom you're set basically that's already like almost a th that is like if you play all three shield captains that's like over a thousand points easy so now you need to figure out what to add on to that um and now it comes to deciding how you want to play really um you can get into the fancy schmancy lists that we talk about in the custodies discord all the time but and by the way if you need to join the custodies discord it's right here but um 
what kind of things should you consider buying? So now is where you're starting to get into the nitty gritty. If you want to play more vehicles, then you probably next want to get Caladius tanks from Forge World. It's painful as that sounds, that those are probably one of our best units. And certainly if you want to play tanks, you'd probably be best to run three of them. So you might as well drop the dosh and get three Caladius tanks. Um, and so that's something if you want to play tanks with a back line of shooting. If you want to go full tanks, then you're thinking about buying one to three palace tanks or palace grav attacks, I think they're called. Those are also from Forge World. So now your bill is adding up because now you're starting to dip into Forge World. Unfortunately, for a lot of the most competitive parts of custodies, you're dipping into Forge World. Let's say you don't want to play vehicles, you want to stick to foot lists, and you want to play the stuff in the codex, or maybe you're playing ETC format or some local format where they do not allow Forge World or only allow a certain amount of Forge World, you know, fascists. Then we start thinking about other units from the codex. So now you're starting to get into the things that are going to do the killing for you, okay? And there's really three main options that are decent. Number one, you buy Wardens. Okay, so these days, a unit of anywhere from 7 to 10 Wardens would be considered one of our hammer units because they have big axes and there's a lot of them and they put out a lot of attacks. So really, if you're looking at Wardens, you're probably going to be running them in large number, so you might as well get a couple of boxes of Wardens. Okay, and that's 10 Wardens. And again, you can turn one into a second Vexilla in case you want to run two Vexillas. And now you have nine other Wardens. Okay, if you're really smart, you'll magnetize them with their axe arms. So now your Wardens can have axes or they can use spears from your Guardians, especially if your Guardians are using sword and board. So there's that option there. And as I said, everything is interchangeable. So magnetize, magnetize, magnetize. So now you have nine Wardens that you can use as a hammer unit. If you want to uh, run a different kind of hammer unit, then you could consider running the Aqualon Terminators, but again, now you're dipping into Forge World. And so really, and they only come in boxes, uh, units of three. So you're looking for three boxes of Aqualon Terminators. Um, so that's gonna add up a little bit, but now that's what you're looking at, having six Aqualon Terminators available to add to your mix. And the other hammer unit, which is a little bit out of favor these days, is bikes. So in the old days, when we used to play Codex before any of the Forge World stuff, bikes were our best unit. And so, you know, people used to run heavy bike lists, 5, 12, 15 bikes. So now if you want to run bikes, you got to decide how many bikes you need. They come in boxes of three. You still had two leftover shield captains from your first box one or two, depending on how many shield captains you run. So now you need to decide how many bikes. Probably you need at least five bikes to make a decent unit. So that means two boxes. Or if you're only using one shield captain, you have two from your last first box and three from a new box. So you could just buy one box, and another box of bikes. So really you have to decide. If you wanna run multiple units of bikes, then you're gonna need more boxes of bikes. So, um, and that's about it. The other stuff is really fringe. And as you get into custodies, you may end up buying these things just to fill out your army or just because you like the models. So these include the other Forge World units, the Natari, the Dreadnoughts, the Galactus, and the Achilles. The Telamon, unfortunately, is pretty fringe right now. Um, and the big flyers, the Orion and the Ares, again, a little bit fringe, certainly not the things to dip straight into when you're first starting the army, especially at $400, uh, $500 a pop. Um, so, um, so these are the things that you probably save so you kind of know what you're doing, what you want to do more, and then you can spend that money if you want. I would not go out and buy those things straight up. Um, the other uh, codex stuff you can just get land raiders, um, you know, dreadnoughts. That things, those things are kind of kind of crappy, and not many people use them, and so I wouldn't spend too much money on that. And that's basically it. By the time you've bought your basic battalion and then one or two hammer units, you've got well over two thousand points and not that many models, and you're good to go basically. So that's how you start, and then you just start to play. And when you play, 
then you start to figure out if you want to play foot or mech or whatever. Like you just figure it out after that based on the style of play, what kind of missions you play. The people that you play against is really going to determine what you end up playing mostly um, because it can be very different. Uh, let's see questions we've got. Um... I just see Shronen. Why do you think the Telemont isn't popular? Local player using them. Yeah, I think the Telemont is in fact quite popular. Unfortunately, it's just difficult to play now because it's quite expensive and it no longer shoots that well because of range got halved, basically. It can punch, but you have to get it there to punch. So uh, one of the guys, Tyler, has been using three Telemons just for funsies. And yeah, they can do stuff if they get there for sure. But they got to get there first. Um, it's just a bit too expensive for the amount of nerfage that it took uh, in the finalized Custodes rules. So it is actually extremely popular. You know, we all have Telemons. Unfortunately, they're just on the shelf right now for serious play. Um, I think uh, I'm going to break out the Telemon at some point just because I missed the guy. But, um, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, it's also typical four drill is a pain in the ass. You have to buy the body and then you have to buy the arms and then you have to buy multiple arms if you want. Multi uh, yeah, so it's a pain in the butt and you definitely got to magnetize it. So, but it is a beautiful model and yeah, so. And then all you have to do is compare the Telemon to the Leviathan or to a freaking Chaplain Dread and, and you're just crying. So, you know, so that's why nobody's playing the Telemon, but it is in fact extremely popular. Um, Venatari got me triggered. Yes, actually, Venatari don't trigger anymore. They're just they're just there. Um, and uh, focus fire, mixed dread, lose tax, blah blah blah. Fist gun, double fist. Yeah. Okay. So so that's basically it. I mean, it's very straightforward. Um, it's probably one of the easiest armies to start just in terms of stuff you have to buy and wrapping your head around things. We don't have a lot of rules. You don't have to worry a lot about secret interactions and combos. We don't have a lot of those things. You're really buying the units for the individual individual units and what each unit can do. There's very little cross-army synergy in Custodes except for reroll auras. Um, very little. You know, the Homer is literally, the Homer stratagem is literally the only bit of inter-unit synergy in the whole book. So... Um, so you don't have to worry about any of that. You just buy the models that you like or you buy the, the models that are good and you just try and make them make them good. So so it's not so to summarize, you need Trajan. You need a box of bikes for shield captains. You need two boxes of custodian guard for basic battalion and for Vexilla. And then you need either two units, uh, two boxes of Aqualon Terminators, two warden boxes one to two bike boxes and or three Caladius tanks plus or minus two to three palace tanks if you buy all that you almost have the same collection that i do minus a whole bunch of bikes and benatari um and you have a lot of models and you don't really need that many oh alaris one box of alaris five alaris is fine so so that's really a very straightforward we don't have a lot of models in the range and um, we have even less models that are any good. So it's fairly easy to get started with Custodes. Total cost, um, I don't know. Probably brand new in the order of, not including Forge World, four to $500, I'm gonna wager. Uh, none of the boxes are particularly expensive. I think the most expensive is like, 60 bucks for three bikers and so if you're only buying one of those that cuts down on that so um you know it's not that bad compared to let's say gene stealer cult uh that would probably set you back two to three thousand dollars brand new inbox um you know that stuff costs you a bomb so this is um like even buying my seer council at you know 40 bucks a pop 10 guys that's already 400 bucks for one unit so <laughs> it's like you know a night is like 130 bucks so really like it is it is not expensive to start custody's army you will have a whole army before you even know it and um yeah so do encourage people to start that army and um 
and uh, you'll have fun. And uh, that's about it. Oh, and books. That should be included in the cost of an army. You only need one book. That's the Custodes Codex. And then you need to download rules from the Forge World website. Or, maybe I shouldn't advertise it, but one of our Custodes Discord members made a consolidated PDF of all of our rules. And uh, you could just download that. Um, so you just need Codex. You need the Forge World finalized rules for their units. And that's it. To play Iron Hands last time, I had to have four books. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so, yeah. So for stories, you just need one book and one PDF download, and you're done. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, you don't even need Maelstrom cards because you can just use the uh, standard ones or whatever. Like, you know, if you play Maelstrom, you might want to invest in them because they're nice. They have a nice picture on the back and stuff. Don't buy the Custodes dice. They suck ass. Um, very hard to read and not good dice. But um, you can if you want. But, um, yeah, so it's easy to start from that point of view as well. So there you go. There's really no reason not to start it, actually. No reason at all. Uh, some other fringe things that you might want to get. So you might want to get a um inquisitor so you can buy those clamshells and you just need to copy the white dwarf i could probably download those rules online and then you might want to consider assassins so now you might be investing in one to four assassins and then those rules also in the white dwarf um those are probably the common things that that don't ruin your pureness and that you can use in the army um Clopfoot, uh, Eric didn't go to LVO. He has stopped playing 40k for now due to life. Um, and uh, yeah, and yep, yeah, so you know, four books for most armies. If they have a psychic or wickening book, now they're now using four books, you know, um, because they have codex, then they have supplement, then they have psychic weakening, then they may have the vigilus or vigilus other thing. Then it's it's pretty crazy the number of books these days. But as I've told you before, that is about to get normalized soon. Uh, McCarrick, I know this is very off topic. You're about to change the base size on 200 orc boys. Can I complete the base then add the model on top or do I have to model glued on it first? Well, that's really up to you, McCarrick, depending how fancy your base is. Uh, if you are making scenic bases and you're going to be able to glue your dudes on after you've done that, then go for it because it's much easier to do bases without the model on it. However, if you're just doing some texture paint and some dry brushing then, and you don't really care that much, then you could totally just whack them on and then do that very quickly. So it's really up to you and how fancy your bases are. Um, yeah, so hard to answer a question without seeing your bases. I commiserate with you. Changing 200 bases is crazy, but there you go. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So that is it. Um, it's pretty straightforward, uh, quick episode. I'm going to open up the floor for questions. Now, if people have questions about anything, but specifically also about getting started and, uh, we will try to answer them in the meantime, people tell me what they're up to hobby wise. I am still about to start priming my seer council plus tw two other Skyrunners. So I have 12 Eldar bikes to paint. And I've decided on a yellow and orange paint scheme for pop with black stripes. So it's going to be pretty cool, I think. I think. Uh, Kieran helped me with that. Shout out to Kieran. And it's going to be a fun hobby project. I decided to try and do as much as I can this year with the airbrush. So I got the Eldar and I got the GSC armies that I'm going to paint up this year. So that's, that's my hobby goals for this year. Uh, let's see. Inquisitor is a strong choice. I think the Inquisitor will be a strong choice now with Grey Knights coming out too. Uh, let's see. Admech. Admech doesn't need any buffs, but they're going to get them. And, uh, yeah. Engine Wars, blah, blah, blah. All right. Just people waxing lyrical online. Okay. Well, I hope that's helpful. Uh, if people do... Uh, want to join the Custodes Discord, please by all means join the Custodes Discord. The link is in the chat below. 
you know what I should do is I should make a little panel on the line but then you can't click on the screen right if I put a link up on the screen itself I don't, I don't know somebody can tell me how that works um, yeah Uh, I think Orc Boy's official base size is now 32. Somebody can correct me. Um, but uh, if the official base size is 32, then unfortunately you got to rebase, man. As painful as that is. Um, yeah, so do consider joining the Custodians Discord. We got a uh, big uh, group there, and uh, it's growing daily. And we talk about a lot of stuff. There's also other things. It's actually just the Canhammer Discord. So there's talk in other channels, Chaos, Eldar, all sorts of things, general stuff. There's a painting channel. There's a, you know, there's all sorts of stuff going on, not just Custodies, but it started off as a Custodies channel, and there is a pretty booming Custodies chat channel there. Of course, tune in to Canhammer TV, follow us on Facebook, follow us here on Twitch, and we're always talking about Custodies here. We got battle reports, we got, um, um, the tactics episodes, we got interviews, we got all sorts of things. We're probably the biggest online source of custodies material right now. So do consider joining. But uh, other than that, I will bid everybody a good night. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to be doing um, our ETC drama episode for the podcast. So stay tuned for that. Thursday night, we've had a change because Matthew couldn't make it. So we're now playing Francois Knight's into peter's necrons so that should be a pretty grudge match because their teams are actually matched up to play first round of can Amber team they grudged each other so that should be pretty interesting and next week's going to be busy we got our l uh can Amber team tournament pre-show with live pairings and predictions and we also have uh our interview with bridger han and uh so stay tuned for next week's going to be leading up to can Amber team tournament and then it's going to be really busy so thank you very much for tuning in guys